in The Unsinkable Mrs. Brown on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. But first, here is Ted Pearson with some timely information about that astonishing chemical, DDT. This year, you can do something about household bugs and pests you've never been able to do before. You can use DDT. These letters, DDT, have come to be a symbol for a, a remarkable insecticide. And today, you can buy many reliable products based on this truly astonishing chemical. Two DuPont compositions, 5% DDT spray and 5% DDT dust, are among the products now available. Uh, when used according to the directions on the labels, they're reliable and safe and will help you rid your home of insects. The spray is for use on surfaces. The dust for use in cracks and hard-to-get-at places. Both give long-lasting protection. Both contain 5% DDT plus pyrethrins for quick-acting effect. 5% DDT spray and 5% DDT dust are among the DuPont Company's Better Things for Better Living Through Chemistry. <laughs> The DuPont Company presents Helen Hayes as the unsinkable Mrs. Brown on the Cavalcade of America. There's only one person left in that lifeboat, Captain. All right. Ready with that pulley there. All right. Hello, down there. Hello, you two. Get ready. All right. Pull. All right. The other survivors are all right, Captain. Good. Come on, you men. Heave. What I don't understand is how the Titanic could run into an iceberg. Come on, then. Heave. Yes, she comes. Come on. Grab her, somebody. Yeah. Here. Here, let me help you, ma'am. I don't need any help. Hello, everybody. Who are you, ma'am? Fine question to be asking. Have you got any grub aboard? Yes, but we want to know who you are. We're making a list of the rescued people. <laughs> well, you better put me down as Mrs. Brown. The unthinkable Mrs. Brown. I'm Molly Brown, and I guess I am unsinkable. Unsinkable on land and unsinkable on sea. And there's only one way to become unsinkable... That's to live the kind of life that gives you a lot of chances to sink. And one of the best ways I know of starting that kind of life is to run away from home at the age of 15, go to work as a pot walloper in a Colorado mining camp. That's what I did. It's a great life being a pot walloper, if you're unsinkable. <laughs> Here she comes now. Here comes Mother. Hey, Molly. You got the dishes washed? Yes, sir. Well, get a move on and tidy up them beds. Uh, Molly. Yes, sir. Wash my blue shirt and feed my mule. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, wait a minute, Molly. Yes, sir. Before you go, give me a little kiss. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hello, Molly. Who are you helloing? Oh, now look, girl. Why can't you be nice to me? Because you're the freshest miner in Leadville. Always trying to kiss me. But don't none of the others try to kiss you? Sure they do, but they're gentlemen. As soon as they give them one black eye, they stop trying. Oh, look, you know I ain't going to bother you none. I like you, Molly. You do? Sure. Oh, uh, my bunk made up? Yes. What are you going to bed for in the middle of the day? I'm low in my mind. <laughs> You've been low in your mind before, but thought a little red eye always fixed you up. <laughs> That's why I'm low in my mind. Ain't got no money to buy red eye. No? Nope. Lost it in a game last night. That's too bad. Well, ain't no worry of yours, I guess. I got some money you could have. Huh? I got 63 cents. Oh, gosh, how far do you think 63 cents would go? It'd carry me through a week or two. I golly, you're young. Young and nice. Don't you get fresh now. No, I, I ain't going to get fresh, Molly. But 63 cents, why, girl, I couldn't take that money from you. It ain't money anyhow. Not real money. Not the kind of money a nice girl like you ought to have. No? No. Now look, Molly, what would you like more than anything in the world? Uh, culture. Well, money can buy it, whatever it is. Culture, huh? Uh, what's culture? It's being a lady. 
and have them find silk dresses and perfume and a big house with stone lions on the front lawn and knowing dukes and counts and actors and gentlemen that shave every day. Well, money can buy it, real money, the kind of money a prospector makes. Uh, don't say, huh? I mean the kind of money a prospector makes when he strikes pay dirt. I'd like to strike pay dirt for you, Molly. Would you? Yeah. I'd build you a house with gee-gaws and fancy iron lace work over the front porch, and I'd hire the fanciest sissy to give you speaking lessons, and I... Well, uh, I'd even shave every day for you. You know, I like you. It's the first time I ever liked you, but I do. That's good, Molly, because you and me are going to be married. I said I liked you, not loved you. <laughs> That's all right. Marry me for my money. Mm, well, maybe. Maybe I will marry you for your money. And now that we're engaged, do you want to borrow my 63 cents? So I took down the tent I was living in and Leadville Johnny built a little shack and we got married. And I found out that the kind of money a prospector makes is the same kind of money a pot walloper makes. Only two of us had to live on it. But there was less beds to make now and less food to cook when there was any. Leadville Johnny was a wonderful husband when he wasn't out with the boys. The only thing that bothered me was I wasn't getting any culture. There didn't look to be much chance of getting any. Till one day when Leadville Johnny come home and... Molly! Molly, open the door! My hands are full! Leadville Johnny, have you been hitting up that red eye again? No, 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 Molly, I ain't. Look... See what I brought here, look. That's money. Yeah. Well, I, I, I ain't never seen so much. Well, well, you got both hands full. And I got more, lots more. My pockets are full. I got it tucked inside my waistband. It, it's coming out of my ears. Five dollar bills, ten dollar bills, hundred dollar bills. Oh, what? Oh. I, I hit it, Molly. I told you I'd hit it. A six foot vein of pure silver. And I sold it. They took me right down to the bank and paid off. Right on the barrel head. Three hundred thousand dollars, Molly. Oh. And it's all yours. Every bit of it. Well, except maybe this handful of fives, on account I gotta celebrate. Johnny, Johnny. Oh, you don't mind if I celebrate with the boys, do you? They're waiting for me up the Saddle Rock Hotel right now to celebrate. Here, give me a kiss. That's my Molly. Oh, I'm a lone wolf from Silver Creek. Wait a minute, Johnny. Uh, oh, what's my... What'll I do with all this money? Suppose I was wrong. Oh, hide it somewhere. Just hide it, honey. And don't worry about it. I'm a lone wolf from Silver Creek, and this is my night to home! Uh, here we are. Can you get that door open without dropping Johnny, huh? Uh, I got it. That's good. Uh, uh, come on, now. you got to get Johnny in without waking Molly. Easy now, Bill. Uh, set him down on the floor. Uh, uh, Johnny sure kind of overdone to celebrate. I didn't should it? say so. Hey, you freeze to death laying there. It's turning gosh awful cold tonight. Well, start a fire in the stove. Huh? But for gosh sakes, be quiet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, there's little. Molly, sleeping like a baby. Good. Well, fire's caught now. She's going to go good. Uh, uh, come on. Molly's stern. Let's get out of here. Oh, Moses. Here, let's get. What's that? Who's... Johnny, you here? Smoke. I smell smoke. You stop the fire, Johnny? That's good. I've been cold. We need a fire. Fire! The stool! Oh, my gosh! Ouch! Oh, i got to get it. Ouch! Oh, gosh. Oh, I can't get it. Johnny! Huh? Johnny, get up. Oh, money. It's burning up. Huh? Oh, wake up, Johnny. Wake up. I, I hid the money in the stool. Oh, uh... Holy dripping mackerel. Our money in the yes, stove. I hit it there and I can't get it. Oh, oh Johnny's gone. Well, 
Well, I'll be done. Three hundred thousand dollars and it's burned up. Johnny, it's burned up. Johnny, say something. Ain't you mad? Mad? No, Molly, I ain't mad. I'll go out and get you some more tomorrow. <laughs> well, there's one thing a fella can say for all that money. Sure burned pretty, didn't it? That was Lead Bill Johnny. Three hundred thousand dollars in flames, and he turned around and went back to sleep. And the next day he went out and darned if he didn't find another mine. Only this one wasn't worth three hundred thousand dollars. This one was worth twenty five million dollars. Well, now you can be a lady, Molly. You're going to have a big house in Denver and culture and speaking lessons and lions on the front lawn, sculpted by the finest cemetery sculptor in Denver. Mrs. Molly Brown sincerely invites you to a shindig at the fine new home of herself and husband. Yours very truly, Mrs. Molly Brown. Mrs. Molly Brown is sorry you was unable to attend the shindig at her house last Wednesday. So she's given another one next Tuesday. I'm sure you'll want to see my swell house with 70 rooms, especially the ones with solid concrete floors with silver dollars stuck in the cement. I hope you can come this time. Yours very truly, Mrs. Molly Brown. Mrs. Molly Brown is having another shindig this Saturday. But I'll change the date if you want me to. Please come. Yours very truly, Mrs. Molly Brown. That's my favorite song, Molly. You know it? Uh-huh. You're sure tinkling it out mighty sad tonight. Unhappy, ain't you, Molly? Uh-huh. You know what I'd do if I wanted to get culture as bad as you do? Uh-uh. I'd go get me some. I'd go to Europe. I'd buy me the finest teachers of, well, whatever it is you want to learn, and I'd get me some culture a mile long. Well, of course, that's providing I was you. I don't care about society. All I want to do is sit in the parlor with my shoes off. But what you want is culture. All right, then go get you some. Leave tomorrow morning. Go on down to the bank. Whatever's in it's all yours. But for crying in the bucket, don't hide your cash in no stove. Johnny. Johnny, darling. You mean it? Uh-huh. Oh, Johnny, Johnny. Johnny, is there anything I can do for you? Any way I can pay you back? Just give me a kiss, Molly, and I'll be paid in full. You are listening to Helen Hayes as Molly in The Unsinkable Mrs. Brown on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. left Johnny behind and went to England. All those lords and ladies. I made a deal with Lady Darnwell. I taught her ladyhood how to ride and shoot, and she... Well, she was supposed to teach me how to be a lady. And I went to all her parties. Pretty soon I was going to everybody's no, parties. No, darling, no. I shall not go to another function this season. No, I shall not attend another... What? Molly Brown will show the guests how to uh, operate a lasso. <laughs> 
Well, why didn't you say so? <laughs> England was easy after it got the hang of it. So was France. But finally, well, I guess I got homesick. So, Molly, you go back to America without appearing on the stage with me, huh? You will be sorry. I, Sarah Bernard, say so. When I got off the train at home, the reporters were there. My paper wants an exclusive interview, Mrs. Brown. I want to ask you about the nobility, Mrs. Brown. Is it true that you're planning a stage career, Mrs. Brown? How long are you going to be here, Molly? Mrs. Brown, welcome back. We've heard so much about your social success abroad. Is it true that you know Sarah Byrne? Are you going to give one of your delightful parties that we uh, remember so well? There'll be a party tonight. Oh, isn't oh, that oh, oh, of course. Oh, uh, we've been looking forward to Wait a there. minute. Mrs. Molly Brown has given a shindig tonight in honor of herself and her husband. And none of you she-cats are invited. Hey, Johnny. Where's do, Johnny? Where are you, you old goat? Here I am, Molly. Oh. In here, in the front parlor. Let go, Johnny. Well, what are you doing on the sofa? Oh, I just feel a little under the weather. It's not... So that's why you didn't come to the station. Oh, Johnny, Johnny, let me kiss you. I've been waiting for it, Molly. Johnny, this is wonderful. Let me give you the one silver, Molly. <laughs> well, this gown's a genuine Parisian, but what's inside of it's still your same old Molly. Oh, you look great. And I feel great. Back home here talking to you, taking off my culture like you take off your shoes. <laughs> Tell me, Molly, did you get what you wanted? Did you learn to be a lady? Well, I learned what a lady is, Johnny. Yeah? Mm -hmm. That's right. Being a lady is... Well, it's a way of looking at things. It's not the clothes she wears. It's not the opera she goes to. It has nothing to do with the social register or the cash register. Being a lady's got more to do with the way she smiles and the way she holds her head high when she's crumbling inside. And the look in her eyes when she sees someone she's loved for the first time and the last time. Being a lady is something a woman can never learn and can never forget. What I want to know is, are you a lady now? I don't know, Johnny. I ain't been tested yet. Tested? That's right. There's a test sometime in every woman's life, and then you can tell if she's a lady. She's a lady if she can face what she has to face, Johnny. <laughs> she's a lady if she can face it like a man, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what a critic. Oh, but look, Johnny, I've got a present for you. What? Oh, open it up. What? Say, look at here. A gun. That's an automatic pistol, Johnny. Ain't it a beauty? <laughs> Just twitch your finger and here she goes. Twelve times. <laughs> but what do you know? What do you know? You mean that thing really shoots? What do you think? <laughs> Pardon, madame. Yes, Marie. Il y a monsieur qui vous attend, ma madame. Je comprends pas ce qu'il veut. Relax, Marie. I'll look him over. Pardon, madame. A bien, Marie. Dad, give it. A bien. Merci, madame. Gosh almighty, who's that? What's she talking about? It's my maid. And you know what I'm going to tell her, Johnny? No. Pourquoi je ne peux pas avoir de paix? Depuis huit ans, je ne suis pas ici, tais-toi. What does that mean? Shut up. Oh. <laughs> well, I'll go see what she wants. I'll be right back. Marie? Ici, madame. And here is the gentleman. How do you do, Mrs. Brown? Tolerable. What can I do for you? Well, I'm the doctor, Mrs. Brown. The doctor? Yes, I didn't want to break in on your reunion with your husband, but I did want to warn you. Leadville Johnny will not live the night out. What? It's his heart. He must have no excitement. Oh, what's that? That crazy critter. Come on. Johnny! Oh, just using the shooting iron. Stop it, your heart. Whee! I got the chandelier that time. Johnny, stop! I got the guy that... Chandelier. Johnny! Uh, I guess I don't feel so good, Molly. Doctor, can't you do something for him? I, I'm afraid not, Mrs. Brown. Oh, Molly. Yes, Johnny. Uh, here, put your head here. Thanks for the present, Molly. I ain't never had so much fun. Oh. The way that she holds her head high. 
when she's crumbling inside. When she sees someone she loves for the last time. So my life started over again. Stayed away from home and from Johnny for eight years because I wanted to be a lady. And now I was staying away because Johnny wasn't there anymore. I went back and forth across the ocean, and I met an ability, and I went to their party, and I didn't know what any of it meant, and I didn't care. Then a ship from England on the SS Titanic. And you know what happened to the Titanic. There weren't enough lifeboats. So I didn't want to get into one. But some men threw me in. And the waves tossed us, and we had a time of it pulling away from the Titanic till we were all alone out there on the dark ocean. No use. We'll never be picked up. No food aboard. We're done for. I'm not going to row. There's no sense in it. I'm not going to row. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. Stop it. Stop it, all of you. Listen to me. Stop. He's got a gun. Yes, I got a gun, and I know how to use it. And the first one over the age of 14 that starts bawling gets a bullet in him. Fine bunch of men. You ain't fit for us women to be the opposite sex of. Now, we're going to row, see? Row. Come on, you grab them oars and give me one. I'll match you blister for blister. What's the matter, Danny? Nothing. Nothing. I'm all right, Molly. You're a brave little soldier, Danny. You're cold. That's it. No, it's not. Hey, up front there, you fellas. Turn your back to us women a minute. Now, Countess, give me a hand. Wait till I lean back. Now, what do you want me to do? Help me off with these petticoats. Grab hold and pull. There's oh. four of them. Grab the whole bunch and pull. Mm. That's it. There, all wool and four yards wide. Danny, you wrap this around you. Gee, thanks, Molly. I was cold. All right, Countess, pass those around where they'll do the most good. Yeah, you, you have Thank you, Molly. But, Molly, now you'll be cold. You ain't got nothing but that thin coat. Don't you believe it, Danny. I got a nice warm corset. <laughs> I think we are, honey. I'm afraid, Molly. Well, honey, let's pray to be saved. I'm afraid. There's nothing to be afraid of. Our Father... Oh, Molly. Come on now. Our Father... Our Father... Who art in heaven... Who art in heaven... Hallowed hallowed be be thy thy name. name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come. come. Thy Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Molly. Give us this. Look. Isn't that a ship? Yes, Danny, of course. <sighs> That's what we were praying for, isn't it? A ship! Well, well, well. And now they call me the unsinkable Mrs. Brown. And my chin goes up when they say it. And my shoulders go back and I'm happy when they say it and proud. I'm proud because now I know after all these years of searching that if a woman is unsinkable, she's a lady. <laughs> Helen Hayes will return to our cavalcade microphone in just a moment. Now, here is Ted Pearson. 
You can buy garden hose today that weighs half as much as garden hose used to weigh. It coils smoothly and easily because it's more flexible. It has nearly twice the bursting strength of pre-war hose, and it can lie out in the hot sun with little or no drying out or cracking. And it costs no more. If anything, it costs less. Uh, one leading merchandising organization advertises, quote, it's the finest hose we've ever sold. We can guarantee it for ten years, unquote. Uh, two developments of DuPont chemistry make this better hose possible. Cordura, high-tenacity rayon, and neoprene rubber. Uh, you've heard about the new automobile tires made with rayon cord that are lighter, cooler, and show promise of outwearing pre-war tires by many thousands of miles. Well, this new garden hose makes use of the same general type of rayon developed by the DuPont company, Cordura, high-tenacity rayon, a very strong, tough fiber with a tensile strength equal to that of steel. And this rayon is so strong, in fact, that only a single braided layer of it's needed in garden hose. Where an average length of old hose weighed 25 pounds, the new weighs 12 and will not burst under 1,000 pounds of water pressure. The attractively colored outside jacket or cover is made of DuPont neoprene. Natural rubber goes to pieces under the action of the ultraviolet rays in sunlight. DuPont neoprene doesn't. You can leave this hose out on the lawn all summer without fear of its leaking because of sun cracking. And the combination of DuPont rayon and DuPont neoprene also means you'll be able to buy lighter, better, longer-lasting hose for other things, uh, washing machines, for example. An all-purpose hose has been developed, too, which safely carries gases, fuel oil and gasoline, hot air from compressors loaded with oil fumes, beer, chemicals, paint, steam, almost anything. Well, anybody would be glad to pay more for a product with all of these improvements, but instead, the new hose costs the same or less. Chemical science, applied to an old, familiar product, flexible hose, has made it lighter, stronger, easier to handle, and longer-lasting. The Cordura rayon and neoprene rubber, of which the new hose is made, are both DuPont Better Things for Better Living Through Chemistry. <laughs> And now, our star, Helen Hayes. You know, Miss Hayes, it's been exactly two years minus um, two days since you last appeared on Cavalcade. Right, what a memory. Oh, that's easy. It's such a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you very much. I certainly enjoyed playing Molly Brown. Tell me, Dwight, what are you doing next Monday? An adaptation of the best-selling book, Storm. Storm? Oh, I remember reading it. A wonderful story. Well, we think our show will be, too. We have two stars for it. There'll be Louis Calhoun. He's a fine actor. Yes, and he'll be co-starred with John Beale. Well, Storm should be worth listening to. Oh, thanks, Miss Hayes. And please don't wait two years to come back again. I won't. Good night, Dwight. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, next week we'll have with us the stars of two of Broadway's leading successes, Louis Calhoun, currently playing in The Magnificent Yankee, and John Beale, now in The Voice of the Turtle. The music for tonight's DuPont Cavalcade was composed by Arden Cornwell and conducted by Donald Voorhees. The part of Johnny was played by Cameron Prudhomme. Our cavalcade play was presented by arrangement with Metro Golden Mare and based on Gene Fowler's story, The Unsinkable Mrs. Brown, from the book Timberline. This is Dwight Wiest inviting you to listen next week to Storm, starring Louis Calhoun and John Beale on the Cavalcade of America, brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. <laughs> This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.